Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Pumele Lezondi with your technology and social media news. Today I'm at Comic Con where a lot of people are dressed like their favorite characters from comics, video games and animation. Well, I'm dressed in my heritage getup for the month of September. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at SABC.co.za on email. This week our Twitter poll is asking you which tech are you using to survive in this period of a lot of power cuts. Results of that are coming up later in the program. Firstly, here's what's coming up in this particular episode. We have gaming at Comic-Con. The Khalima Mutlansa Foundation holds a skills development workshop. And in our conversation, we revisit cybersecurity as October is Cybersecurity Month. From gaming as a competitive spot to anime and characters from comic books, you find it all right here at Comic Con Africa. They had to take a two year break, but they've had to re strategize and they're now here at Nesrek in Johannesburg. This year's Comic-Con Africa Expo took place at the much bigger Johannesburg Expo Center in Nesrek. Two years ago, before the world shut down, the event was in the now closed The Dome in North Riding, also here in Johannesburg. Imagine 80,000 people walking in and out of the venue over a space of four days. They're here for different reasons. I am here for anime. As you can see, I am cosplaying Koku Shibo from Demon Slayer. I can't spoil it because it's in the manga, so this character is not out yet. But yeah. But I am dressed as Metaton from Undertale. And I'm here because I'm a huge geek. And I'm having lots of fun looking at all, all the stalls and the other people dressed up. And yeah, it's a great time. There's a kid zone too. We told young ones were consulted on what they'd want. Well, you know, Comic Con, some of it's adults, some of it's for children, right? So we felt like we need the children to tell us what they want to see. So we brought together 12 kids, and we have a, and they're a panel of experts, and they're an advisory board, and they've told us adults what they want to see at the show. And everything you see in Kids Con in the hall is all developed by the kids. So they want Nerf, they want Nintendo, they want a roller skating ring, they want everything you can see there. It's all what they want. So this year, it's gaming that seems to be a big hit. I'm at Comic Con because I like gaming and yeah, it's a fun experience and my favorite game is FIFA obviously. And I do game out in space, uh, Rocket League, Fortnite, Call of Duty. I like playing games and it's very, yeah, the atmosphere is very really nice and like I've been playing since morning, came at night and it was, it's been cool, it's been chilled and yeah. Despite actor Jason Momoa from Aquaman and Game of Thrones pulling out of Comic-Con Africa, there were still long queues that were on their way to international stars that even we could not get to because there were just too many people who wanted to see them. So we have uh, Jamie from uh, Stranger Things, he's back there. Um, we have some uh, representatives from Shazam, we have the Team Wolf guys. Um, then we have international comic book artists and then we've got some amazing local talent. Comic-Con would not be Comic-Con if it wasn't a dress-up affair. You'd swear you were in a video game or some kind of universe where comic stars come to life. Now, I came as Mary Shaw from Dead Silent and uh, Samara from The Ring and Carrie from the movie Carrie. Um, so I'm dressed as a uh, Victorian vampire today. Um, I came here because, well, the, the whole Comic-Con vibe is really, it's been amazing to see happen overseas. It's been amazing to see happen in the past in South Africa and I've never had an opportunity to come. If you didn't make it to the Joburg events this year, the next one is in March in Cape Town. The Red Bull Canvas Clutch finals are also taking place right here at Comic Con, but the problem they've been experiencing today is a lot of load shedding. But as things go, they're adamant that they'll eventually get to the end of the competition. Gaming has become a huge spectator sport. The eSport enthusiasts here at Comic Con Africa are looking at a big screen 
that's showing them what competitors at this VS gaming tournament are doing on their computers. Um, I've never actually been to an event like this, watching them play and spectating. Uh, I just usually watch online. Um, so I play Valorant and I play League, so we watch those championships and uh, I just really enjoy it if we're in Discord and things. We'll just, um, as, as, as friends in the party, we'll just watch it over this Discord stream. Uh, we really just enjoy it because it's, it's competitive and we know what it takes to be that good at a game. And yeah, some people don't actually know that or don't think that because it's gaming, but yeah, some of them take skill. So. Across the hall is another esports tournament. It's the Red Bull Combat Clutch tournament. Those participating compete in teams. Us taking part is like testing our skills against one of the best in the country to see if we qualify to go pro because that was the initial plan. But then we wanted to see if after the tournament we can go pro or is it the end of the life? Um, so competitive gaming has always been um, part of my life um, and I decided that it's going to be a great opportunity for a bunch of friends and myself to just get together, try and play competitively and see how we can do as a team. Rehearsals have to happen when there's power and mostly with internet access. But power cuts affect local gamers and their capabilities in unimaginable ways. Yeah, I mean, like, it's sometimes not that great because, you know, we want to grind the game, we want to get practice in, but we can't always because load shedding hits and then we sit in the darkness. So. Having to reschedule matches, practices, things like that to work around load shedding itself. But other than that, it's we make do with what we have. Despite this, they have to do what they love. According to PWC's Global Entertainment and Media Outlook, the global gaming industry revenues are expected to exceed 320 billion US dollars by 2026. That's less than four years away. Esports is so serious that there are even commentators here at Comic Con. I am looking out for really, really creative plays, you know, stuff that people don't usually do on a general basis. You know, everyone plays the game differently, but there's a standard set of rules for every single game. And so I'm looking for moments where there's brilliance, there's greatness, there's talent that you can see these players uh, like have and they're like shine through the, the, the screen and stuff like that there. So that's what I look for. And then I just cast those moments. And The final winner of the Red Bull Campus Clutch is a team Team called Socks Up. They will now compete in the world finals in Brazil in December. Let's take a bit of a detour now from Comic Con and go to the Kalima Motlante Foundation, which is giving well needed digital skills and social skills to some kids from deserving schools. The Halim Atlante Foundation works with many schools and before COVID we were actually all over the country but since COVID we've just selected a few schools and this time we have two schools, one from Soweto, Forte High School and another one from Town Jules High School. These schools are actually top performing schools in Kauteng and we are here with their CAT learners computer application technology learners who are here to learn digital skills and creativity, we're merging the two. We are also here with the educators because we also want the educators to do away with you know, paper worlds, like become a paperless world for the students so that they are in, on par with the kids. I mean, we're here with some of the teachers, but the kids are actually teaching you know, the educators, because the kids are so like, computer savvy. In school we have an, a subject called computer application technology, which is based on computers and how to work with them. So um, here we have a program that we're doing that is based on computers. So far they've given us an activity based on PowerPoints, which is one of the topics that we have covered in school. At school I'm learning a lot to say and I'm learning a lot about technology in investing and building technology most of the times and creating websites and like being in the Microsoft area at school. So today here contributing to this it's gaining more knowledge on what you've been taught at school. 
you understand. So I learned a lot here. As we are in here, we're learning more about things and we're catching more information and resources that we didn't know of. And it's actually fun. Here and at school, we're learning about PowerPoint and other stuff. At school, we do PowerPoint, but like I can't understand everything there, and I'm afraid to ask the teacher. But here, I'm free, and I ask everyone about PowerPoint, and I get help, and I, I get more knowledge about PowerPoint. Definitely, this weekend was about holistic uh, learning. We had we spoke about well-being. We had, I mean, a whole one day where they were telling us about what they love about themselves you know that confidence building and you were surprised how confident they are and you know when we were thinking of this whole training we actually thought that hey maybe these kids will be bored you know these these are the device kids but you were surprised how you know sensitive authentic and uh, ready to to accept uh, knowledge wanting to learn and you know many of them were asking us about how, how to love themselves how do they know you know and we have to tell them that love is a decision you decide it's a decision you take a decision to love yourself to put it's 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 okay to say no to others to take care of yourself it is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at SABC.co.za on email. Let's take a quick break. Stay with us. SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at SABC.co.za on email. Welcome back. Now, cyber threats continue to affect us in our daily living, especially as we are now working from home and October is a cyber security month. We've realized that in the last couple of years, they've affected different industries, whether you're talking about the financial sector, whether you're talking about government and many industries add to that. And Video Advisory Services has embarked on work to educate different organizations and people on how to fight off these threats when they happen. And joining me is Gilchrist Oshwana, who is the director at BDO Advisory Service and also the head of uh, cyber security rather, at BDO. Hello and thank you very much for being a part of our network, uh, Gilchrist. Maybe we can start by telling us about the recent threats that we've experienced, especially when it comes to the South African context, when it comes to um, cyber crimes and cyber security. Okay, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, so, from my side, I just want to start by saying cybersecurity remains a top risk for all organizations across different sectors. Uh, according to the World Economic Forum, cybersecurity uh, remains one of the top 10 risks over a horizon of 5 to 10 years. Uh, and the contribution factors to this includes um, the advancement of t uh, technology, uh, which we've seen rise in the last couple of years. Uh, coming in a form of digital transformation all the way to introduction or advancement of technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, IoT, uh, which is Internet of Things, Internet of Robotics, things enabled devices. Uh, on the networking side, we see the rise of edge comp computing, blockchain, and also 5G technology. But coming back to your point, you know, quite recently we've seen the rise of um, uh, cybersecurity attacks such as uh, ransomware and also attacks on critical infrastructure including supply chain related type of attacks that have a fraud element to it. Uh, from a South African con context, you know, we've also experienced a rise in terms of ransomware. Uh, one statistic that I want, you to, I want to share with you today is that of, you know, the number of attacks that are happening on a daily basis. It is estimated that, you know, um, in every 11 seconds, you know, there is a cyber security attack that happens in an organization. Uh, we've seen the evolution of ransomware from an attack that used to target individuals to an attack that now focuses on enterprises with massive operations. Uh, this is something that is affecting South Africa. We've also seen it take multiple shapes in terms of 
uh, moving from a single attack to a multiple kind of attack where you know a ransomware is demanded but you know upon paying that ransomware you still don't retrieve all the data uh, that you are promised according to statistics 34 35 percent of companies that pay ransomware receive about 65 percent of their da data back but also there's another component of naming and shaming you know where which forms part of you know that multiple attack um, but while we talk about ransomware according to Verizon we've seen that you know there was such a steep increase of 13 percent uh, year over year which uh, is more than the last five years combined in terms of growth so this is a lucrative um, operation for those that actually um, um, perform this uh, but also, I mean, we've seen also an evolution in a sense that, you know, now we sit with um, ransomware, which is provided as a service. Here we're talking about, you know, malware that is made available together with tools uh, for a person who's not skilled up as some of these hackers to be able to execute the ransomware with, you know, a profit type of sharing model if it's successful. So that's what we are seeing and you know it's it's also affecting us at home we've seen it in the news uh, uh, from government you know with the department of justice and the impact thereof uh, from what you're saying it's not a matter of should it happen if it happens it's a matter of when it happens because it seems like um, it's going to happen and it's going to be increasingly happening so what can then organizations do um, and those that work for organizations um, when they in order to protect themselves uh, for when things happen there's also something that we call dwell time uh, so meaning that from the initial access to a time when um, there is an impact if we talk about ransomware from the time when ransomware is deployed you know you will find that you know in some cases it takes a lot of days you know between access to deployment but sometimes you know it can actually take hours or less than that but coming back to your point, you know, what we've seen is that uh, from my side in terms of uh, experience is that uh, we always, we underestimate the impact of the human factor. Uh, cybersecurity is not just the technology factor. Uh, we've seen with research and also evidence that, you know, uh, most cyber hacks require human element to succeed. According to Verizon, the number is sitting at 85%. If you take a statistic from the World Economic Forum, the number is sitting at 95 percent meaning that in your kill chain process which is a process to actually um, you know uh, attack an organization uh, eight or nine out of ten attacks you know require a human intervention in order to succeed from an enterprise perspective look for me you need to have visibility of your information assets uh, meaning that you need to have visibility of what is sitting within your ecosystem and with that then you need to establish you know what is it that is sitting who's responsible for that you know then the next thing you need to understand where you are exposed this is what we call vulnerability management meaning that you know now you have a profile of your risks and threats and you start dealing with that in terms of treating those particular infections because some of those threats you know um, a wide scale meaning that you know they are being exploited in different industries and then you have some that you know what you know they still they haven't picked up they haven't picked up in terms of exploitation and as video you've embarked on education work um, around all of this what happens then why have you decided that this must be your task yeah look uh, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in uh, cyber security awareness and you know uh, the reason for that is because if we can properly deal with awareness and also training of our people uh, we will mitigate the biggest risk uh, when it comes to cyber security i did share with you the statistics in terms of you know the human factor or the human element you know in terms of exposure or enabling cyber security or cyber attacks uh, so if you deal properly with that you are able to actually reduce that percentage of 85 or 90 percent into something much 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 smaller uh, so for us you know 
we see it as a very important pillar for organizations to deal with. Uh, look, if you want to build um, a robust, you know, cybersecurity defense, you know, you need to uh, invest in your human factor in terms of uh, capacitating that uh, so that, you know, the human element is involved in the prevention, also the reaction and also the maintenance of that security posture. For me, it's very important. I mean, when we talk about human factors, we're talking about actions or events that enable a, a cybersecurity incident or a data breach. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Let's find out what else is taking place in the rest of the world in the technology space. One of the stars of Dodge's North American International Auto Show lineup is its Charger Daytona SRT EV, a vehicle being built as the world's first all-electric muscle car. So this is uh, the new generation of electrified muscle cars, fully electric, it happens to be a two-door coupe uh, with beautiful lines that harken back to our, 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 uh, our, our muscle car days. Yeah. Dodge wasn't the only automaker making waves with concept cars at the Moto City's Auto Show. Lincoln also brought out a pair of visitors from the future in their Lincoln Model L100 and Star Concept SUV. Both vehicles boast a see-through front, wraparound seating and reclined lounge posture. Still in the USA. Tesla has an ambitious plan to deploy thousands of humanoid robots within its factories, expanding eventually to millions around the world. Tesla bot will be real. And it's not just Tesla. Other automakers like Honda and Hyundai have also been leveraging robotics technology to expand automation at car factories, but not without facing challenges and skepticism. You know, I think that Hyundai and Boston Dynamics are a match made in heaven. Right now, most of the robots used in factories are doing very repetitive, very specific, precision-oriented jobs. And that's not what we see in the future. We see a future where robots become much more intelligent, much more useful, really contribute to productivity and safely, and be, become a part of our everyday lives. From 2007 to 2012, General Motors and NASA joined hands to develop humanoid robots, R2, for assembly and space exploration. But NASA says they are not under development anymore. Several robot startups like Rethink Robotics also went out of business as they failed to commercialize their products. And now in Italy. Robot drones could be the builders of the future. 3D printing new structures as they fly according to researchers who were inspired by wasps and bees. So it's not about copying everything about the nature, it's copying the principle and then building, and building robots that benefit from uh, the philosophy of how the natural world operates very robustly and in a scalable manner and then benefiting from the best of technology that we have access to. The natural drift of a drone in flight is countered with an adjustable nozzle that moves to keep the spray head in the right place. Kovac said the technology could help reduce the costs and risks of construction in the future compared to traditional manual methods. South Africa has been experiencing a lot of power cuts of late. It's even affected some of the stuff that's happening right here at Comic-Con. As we saw that the Red Bull campus event had to take a break for a bit while they were waiting for power to reconnect or back up electricity to eventually kick in. So this week our Twitter poll is asking you how you remain powered up for the things that you need the most as the country has been experiencing in power cuts and that's it so that's all we have for you find us on SABC network on Facebook Twitter and Instagram use network at sabc.co.za on email from me it's Pumela Lezondi and the rest of the team right here at Comic-Con Africa in Johannesburg have a good one bye-bye